Hey guys, welcome to another video from Foolish Engineer. This time we'll check out the working of a Zeta converter with waveforms, its advantages, disadvantages, and applications. So, let's go for a ride. The Zeta converter is also known as an inverting subic converter. It is made of a MOSFET or we can say an active switch, a diode, two inductors, an input capacitor, output capacitor and a series capacitor. The construction of this converter is like this. PWM pulses are given to the MOSFET which switches the MOSFET on and off and that's how the output voltage is adjusted. Unlike bug boost and chuck converter, it doesn't give inverting output voltage. The output voltage is of same polarity and this can be either higher or lower than the input voltage depending upon the duty cycle of the PWM given to the MOSFET. The output voltage of the Zeta converter is given like this, where the D is the duty cycle of the PWM pulses given to the MOSFET. A DC supply has to be given to the input. Initially, everything is still. Nobody charged, nobody is supplying power to anyone. But when the MOSFET is turned on, the current tries to flow through this direction. In the starting phase, it opposes the flow of current. Basically, it acts as the high resistance component. But after some time, its impedance decreases and current starts rising. During this time, the inductor stores the energy in it. Now the MOSFET is turned off and it induces the flyback voltage which has the magnitude of V is equal to LDI by DT where L is the inductance of the inductor and DI by DT is the change in current with respect to time. Due to this, the direction of the current remains same. So, the diode gets forward pass and the series capacitor starts charging through this inductor. Wait a minute. The voltage of this inductor is DC. So how does this capacitor will let the current flow? Well, the current which is provided by the inductor is not constant DC. It is decreasing continuously. So this capacitor acts as the short circuit. If you notice, during this both cycles, there is no output power provided to the load. In the next cycle, the MOSFET is turned on again. The inductor L1 charges from the supply and this capacitor C1 starts discharging through this path. So the capacitor provides power to the load and it charges the inductor. In the next cycle, the MOSFET is turned off. As the inductor L1 is charged, it tries to charge the capacitor C1. Now the inductor L2 is also charged. So it induces the flyback voltage and starts providing power to the load. And this is how a Zeta converter works. The working of this converter is just like the Chuck converter and Sepik converter. If you want to learn about Sepik converters and Chuck converter, the link is down below. Let's understand the working of the Zeta converter in detail with waveforms. Initially, PWM is given to the MOSFET. Let's consider this is an N channel MOSFET. When the gate pulse is high, the MOSFET turns on. The current across inductor starts increasing linearly. As the circuit is closed, the current starts increasing through the MOSFET due to the inductor current. The MOSFET is on, so the voltage across MOSFET is zero. Now, this side of the circuit is totally isolated and there is no current flowing through this part. So the capacitor current, inductor current L2 and output voltage are zero. Now, in the second stage, the MOSFET is turned off. As the inductor provides energy to the capacitor, its current starts decreasing. 
the MOSFET is off, so the input is cut off from the circuit. So there is no current flowing to the MOSFET. Due to this, the voltage across MOSFET will be equal to input voltage plus flyback voltage generated by the inductor because the polarity of the input voltage and inductor voltage are in the same direction. Now the diode is turned on because it gets forward biased due to the inductor current and the capacitor starts charging so the current flowing through the capacitor is equal to the inductor current L1. Even in this stage the current doesn't flow through the output side of the converter so the L2 current and output voltage is zero. The MOSFET is turned on again in the third cycle. The current of the inductor starts increasing and stores energy. Now the capacitor C1E charge, it tries to provide the power to the output. So the inductor current L2 flows from this path. So current flowing through the MOSFET increases. This time, the current across MOSFET is the addition of the inductor current L1 and inductor current L2 because both inductors are charging. The voltage across MOSFET is zero. The voltage provided by the capacitor is equal to the output voltage. This voltage is clearly filtered by this output filter. Due to capacitor C1, the inductor charges, so the current across inductor increases. Here we get the constant DC output voltage. Now the MOSFET has turned off again. The current of the inductor starts decreasing. The capacitor starts charging. There is no current flowing through the MOSFET. The voltage across MOSFET will be equal to the input voltage plus flyback voltage of the inductor L1. The diode turns on. The capacitor current is equal to the inductor current. So this part of the circuit behaves just like the second cycle but the inductor L2 comes into picture. It induces the flyback voltage and power to the load is provided by the inductor L2 and output capacitor because these components had stored the energy and charge in the earlier cycle of the converter. So the inductor current decreases linearly, which keeps the output voltage constant. So this third and fourth cycle repeats throughout the process and we get the regulated output voltage. In easier words, when MOSFET is on, the inductor L1 and L2 store the energy from the input and series capacitor respectively. When the MOSFET is off, these inductors release the stored energy, so L1 charges the series capacitor and L2 provides the output power. And this is how a zeta converter works. This type of DC to DC converter can be used in the maximum power point tracking of a solar panel, just like a bug boost converter. Well, this design is identical to the SEPIC converter. So we will check the advantages and disadvantages of the Zeta converter by comparing the SEPIC converter. The first advantage of the Zeta converter is it has the stable feedback loop. The feedback loop of the Zeta converter is more stable, so even if the voltage range is wide, it can provide very good output voltage regulation. Second is low ripple. The output ripple of the Zeta converter is also lower than an equivalent SEPIC converter design. The Zeta converter topology needs a very large value of series capacitor for the energy transfer because it is the bridge between input and output circuitry and it provides the power directly so the zeta converter is highly dependent on this capacitor. The MOSFET or we can say an active switch is not grounded so we need a high side driver to drive this MOSFET. Well that's all about the zeta converter. I hope you understood something from this. If you have any questions let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and finally thanks for watching.